things are a little more open here and there's a ditch here where water has collected which is ideal for the growth of this cattail plant none of the distinctive uh, heads are out well there's some back here but this plant is super useful unfortunately less so in suburban areas than it is in the wild but all this in the early spring will have a lot of yellow pollen and you can take that it's very powdery and you can just use it like any other sort of uh, flour or meal. Just mix it with water, make some dough. And also in the spring, the bottoms of the stalks, if you pull them up, let me show you here. There's plenty of this stuff growing everywhere and uh, cattail is a sign of a weaker wetland so it's not too huge of a deal to pull one but you can see that it's got this beautiful white part. And this is just really delicious, but I'm not gonna eat it here because if you smell it, you can almost smell the chemical of like pesticides and other things that have run off from everyone's lawns and from the roads into this ditch. And I've actually tried tasting this before and you can tell that it's got like a, almost a spiciness to it that's very unnatural but in the wild it tastes really good, kind of like heart of palm. Really a huge shame that you can't eat it here. But in the fall you can dig up the rhizomes that are further down below the plant and eat those as well. And of course the cattail heads during the winter and the fall become brown and you can break them up and they become really fluffy. And that's just perfect tinder. And the best part is that when you get those you also get these all dried up and that makes great kindling for a fire too. So an extremely useful plant, but unfortunately, even though it's very commonly grown here, there's not much you can do with it other than making fire. Wish I could eat it. Now, if you were to eat that, you might develop a headache or something. But luckily this tree, willow, the bark of this tree is actually the basis for aspirin. So the modern medicine you take now is based on this tree. And if you chew some of it, you'll still get that effect. It sort of tastes like uh, the pill and uh, it'll relieve any headaches or any pain you have. Well, at least some of it. It's really beautiful. It's also worth mentioning that willow is often a good wood for fire spindles and hearth boards because it's sort of a softer wood. Anyway, I guess we'll keep going. By carefully separating the bark from the wood, you can also carve young willow branches into whistles but they'll stop working after one day. There's some sort of ramble fruit growing back here, and none of them are really ripe, but this is the most ripe. Now based on what it looks like when you take it off, this is a blackberry. They also tend to have larger little nodules, but uh, when you take a blackberry off the plant, the little tip of the stem will stay inside of the fruit. Whereas with raspberries, it'll be hollow inside when you pick it. But uh, I guess I'll give this a try really quick. Pretty good, still pretty sour because it's underripe, but really juicy and refreshing. So these are the seed pods of another plant with an umbel of flowers, similar to the wild carrot we saw earlier. And this could be cow parsnip, it could be uh, uh, hogweed, both of which are not good to touch and really poisonous to eat. Or it could be wild parsnip, which is still sort of irritating if you touch it, but has an edible root. And one of the ways you can tell is that cow parsnip and hogweed have white flowers, while wild parsnip has yellow flowers. And there's some other coloration issues with the stem that you can look at, but uh, right now it's gone sort of brown, so it's not of much use. But basically, when I see plants like this, I try to tend to stay away because a lot of times there's too much room for confusion and the toxic variants of the plants are just too toxic to bother with. There's a lot of ways to distinguish all these different plants, but we'll talk about that in another video. Over here though is a pretty safe plant. And it, you can see it has this really long stalk with these little brambles, these burrs that stick to your clothes. Sometimes when you go walking through the woods in the fall, you'll just come out with tons of these on you. This is called burdock. And really the most distinctive feature is probably the huge leaves. 
Now this plant in particular is a second year plant. Burdock is a biennial plant, so in its first year, it'll just have a bunch of basil leaves growing out at the bottom, coming out from the same area in the ground. But its second year, the leaves will come out from this long stalk that grows. Now, you can eat the bottom of this stalk, at least when it's a bit younger, and it's pretty good, kind of crunchy, almost like celery-like. Um, but when you want to eat the root, you have to go for a first year plant. So you're looking for a plant that does not have the stalk, it just has a bunch of big leaves at the bottom. It's a bit tough to dig up, but you get a decent sized root and you can either clean it and cook the whole thing or you can peel the rind off and eat it. You can eat it raw, cooked, anything. And uh, they actually sell variants of this in the Japanese market and we've made stir fry with it. It's got a very crunchy taste and it has kind of a woody taste. So it's maybe not the best flavor for some people, but quite good I think. Now this, I know that these berries look really good. It looks kind of like tomatoes or something. And these flowers look so beautiful too with the yellow and the purple. But this is called woody nightshade and if you were to eat it it'd be really really toxic, potentially fatal even. And of course there's plants in a similar genus or in the same genus called uh, deadly nightshade and if you eat any of that you'll just pretty much die. Are those in the same thing as bell peppers? Because bell peppers and tomatoes are both nightshades. Yeah, yeah, it's the same family as tomatoes which makes it extra difficult. There's another plant called a uh, horse nettle which also has a similar growing fruit and it's also really bad to eat. Um, so yeah, just look at it with your eyeballs but not your tongue. <laughs> Here's another strange plant and the stem is kind of uh, segmented. It's got a very distinct like sides to it and thorns. And it's got these oddly shaped five leaves with thorns on the bottom. This is another plant in the genus Rubus actually. Uh, so it'll grow a lot of these similar bramble fruits like blackberries and raspberries. There's none on it right now, but if there were, I would probably eat them. There are some over here that are still a bit underripe, but... And it looks like these are also blackberries, based on how they're coming off of the plant. But, uh, I unfortunately am not spotting any ones that are ripe. So I guess I won't be having any fruit today. I'm gonna end the video with, uh, two plants. Now, I don't own any pets, I don't own any dogs or cats, and... Plants are much easier to tend, especially when they grow in the wild because you don't have to do anything. But the first plant is called dogbane, and it almost resembles milkweed, but it's got all these branches coming off, and it's got this really red stem, and when you break the leaves, it's got a milky sap, as you can see coming out of there. And the outer fibers of this are actually really strong and flexible. So in the summertime, when you break it, you can make cord out of that. And actually in the fall, when this turns brown, you can peel that off and sort of scrape the inner fibers and spin those into string as well. Really good plant. But for, for all you feline lovers out there, there's another plant down this trail that you'll likely be familiar with. Until then, you can see some more of these elderberries and things like that. But this here is called catnip, and it's just growing out here in the wild. And it's got actually a very minty smell. It's kind of like mint mixed with a skunk, very potent smell. And if you dry this up and feed it to your cat, he'll start uh, hallucinating and getting all high and probably start listening to acoustic guitar music or something. But it's really fun to watch, so. Unfortunately, I don't think humans can use it in any way like that. Or maybe fortunately, depending on how you feel. <laughs> but, uh, it's just pretty incredible that this random hedge along a path and a railroad, just in the middle of suburbia, has so many different uses. So you've got your food, you've got your medicine, and you've got plants for tools and shelter. I could just live out here. Maybe hop on the railroad and travel around once in a while. 
But until then, I'll see you next time. Now this is actually a toxic plant, but there's something called, oh, I should say what it is. That's okay, we have people. Yeah. Go back, go back, go back. There's just this long hedge that goes along this path and is adjacent to a railroad. <laughs> that is this nice, beautiful hedge, which is also adjacent to a railroad. And we actually, Ready? <laughs> <laughs>